All right, guys, so we're back with a brand new video, and I'm going to show you how to connect your Node.js slash Express app with MySQL. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about why we would ever need a database. Well, first, let's talk about what databases are. So databases allow us to store collections of data that are in an organized manner. So later on, we can retrieve them, we can update, we can delete them, or we can even create new records. Now, there are different types of databases. The two common ones are relational and non-relational, and the very popular databases are MySQL and MongoDB. MySQL would be a relational database and MongoDB is a non-relational database. We're not going to go super in depth on differences because that's not the whole point of this series, but we are going to be using a MySQL for this entire tutorial series. So the reason why we need databases is very simple. If we store everything in memory, it's going to be wiped out as soon as we restart our application. So let's say if we're writing an application that saves a bunch of users. If you save it in memory, like in some kind of array or data structure, if you restart your application, it's going to be gone. So the reason why we have a database is so we can save that data to the database. And even if our application restarts or if our system gets turned off and we have to turn it back on, the database is still going to have that data. So hopefully that little interesting Introduction to databases, it makes sense. So what you're going to want to do is you want to make sure you have MySQL server installed. So I'll leave a link in the description that shows you how to install MySQL. If you're on Windows 10, if you're on Mac or Linux, it should be pretty easy. Just look up something on Google on how to install MySQL server. It should be very easy. Once you install MySQL server, you're going to want to install a package called MySQL 2. This is a node module that's going to allow us to connect our Node.js app to the MySQL server. And the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna log into our MySQL server. So you can log into your MySQL server however you want. I'm just going to use the command line. So MySQL hyphen U, my username hyphen P, and then my password. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a database. And I'm gonna call it sample app, not the best name. Okay, and I'm going to step inside a database by typing use sample app. And if I type show tables, this is going to display all of our tables. You can see it says empty set because there are no tables. So we're going to create a table called users. So using the create table statement. So create table users. And we're going to go ahead and have just two fields. So two columns for our MySQL table. All of our data is organized in tables and columns. So you can try to think of this table that we're about to create as an actual table, like some kind of diagram. And it has columns and each column is going to represent a specific field. So for example, we're going to have a username column and we're gonna have a password column. So for username, the data type is going to be a varchar. We're going to give it a size of 255. This is similar to a string. And for password, we'll do the same varchar 255. And there you go. So now if I type show tables, we have a table. And you can see that we have a nice output that shows us what our table looks like. So now that we've created a table, we're going to go and create a new file called database.js. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to simply just import MySQL2, so the package that we just created. And I'm going to type module.exports equals MySQL. So we just imported MySQL2 into this variable MySQL. And I'm going to call the create connection method. And this is where we're going to create the connection and export it so we can import it to wherever we need to use it. So we're going to type host property. That's going to map to localhost because we are logging into our local MySQL server for the username, Anson. And then for password, I'm just gonna type my password. And then the database name. So this was the database that we created earlier. So sample app was the name of it. And that should be just it. And then I'm gonna import that into users.js, which is inside routes folder. So const db equals require. We're gonna go out one directory and then reference database. All right, so now we have our connection imported. Let's set up a post method. So every HTTP post request made to this endpoint, which is going to be slash users. This is going to expect a request body and the request body is going to have both the username and the password. So we're going to just to structure that from rec.body and I'll just check to see if username and password are both truthy. We haven't done any validation yet, but don't worry. So first let's just start up our application. So nodemon app.js. What we're going to do is we're going to make a request to this route. And sometimes a lot of people in their applications tend to make a database call in the entry point of their app just to make sure everything is good. So you could do that, but I'll leave that to you guys. We're just gonna go ahead and call this endpoint. And then we're going to 
interact with the database. So let me just open up Postman right now. So we're gonna make a call to localhost port 3000 slash users. And let me just console log. So let's pass in a request body. So username is just gonna be Anson, password will be 123. And there you go, it's being logged right over here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to reference our database and I'm going to call the promise method. And what we're gonna do is we're going to call the query function or the query method. And this is where we're going to write our SQL or MySQL query. So what we wanna do is we want to create a record in our database table. So we're going to use the insert into statement and we want to type the name of our database table. So users was the name of the table. So we're inserting into users, we're creating a new record. And then we're going to need to specify the values we want for our columns. Now, since we only have two columns, we can actually just do values. And then what we can do is we can type quotes and then use template strings or we, we'll use dollar sign and insert the username first. And then we'll do the same for password. So password, and basically this will translate into something like insert into users values and then the username that we passed in the request body same with password and notice how we're wrapping this inside quotation marks okay so that's very important okay so this should return a promise so i'm just going to go ahead and try catch this and if it throws an error then it should catch it down there so i'm just going to send a 201 status created user Okay, so let's try this out right now. So we create the user and let's verify that. So let's go into our database. And so select asterisk from users will select every single column from the users table. So you can see that our record is in our database. I can delete from users to delete every single record in the database. And let's create it again. There we go. Let's pass in some other data. So let's just say Jack. And there we go. We now have a simple creation in our database. Okay, so let's set up another route. Well, we already have it set up from the previous two videos, two or three videos. So let's say we want to get all the users from the database. So whenever we hit this slash endpoint, so slash users, we're going to go ahead and call db.promise.query and this time since we're getting stuff from a database we're not going to be using the insert into method or, go or statement we're going to be using the select statement so we're going to just select asterisk from users and that should be just it so this itself should return or results so since this i'm pretty sure this does return a promise so we're going to have to await this call and this is going to actually return an array of arrays so i'll show you what it returns so let's make a get request and you're going to see that oh we need to add the async keyword because we're using await okay so you're going to see that we have a bunch of stuff but the only thing that we need to look at is this first element inside this whole array so the entire result is an array of arrays and the first element itself is the data the second element is the column definitions which we don't have to worry about so i'm just going to go ahead and log results zero results subscript zero because results is an array and that should just give us our data right over here and so this is an array of text row objects so what i can do is I can actually just send this back. So let me just give it a status of 200, send results, subscript zero. And there you go. So now we just made a simple get request to our data. And if I were to restart, our data is still here. So that's just a simple example of how we can integrate a database in our application. 
and hopefully you guys are able to understand why we would ever need to use a database and yeah so hopefully this whole video made sense and i'll see you guys in my next one peace